welcome to the 2016 Mayhemies. Uh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It's been a whole year since last year's Mayhemies, but uh, it's the truth. That is what happened. Uh, I am Lunchbox, you know me from the Wrestling Mayhem Show, of course, and we have an esteemed panel uh, for this year's Mayhemies. Gentlemen, would you introduce yourselves? We're going to start out closest to you. Absolutely, we'll go this way. Absolutely. Uh, of course, I've been on the Wrestling Mayhem Show probably too many times. You guys are probably sick of seeing me, but it's been a while, so in case you're new, uh, I'm Justin Plummer, currently owner and promoter of IWC Wrestling, uh, the largest independent wrestling promotion here in the Pittsburgh area. Um, but today we'll be talking about big time pro wrestling. So we'll, I'll add a different perspective, I guess, than these two. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, my name is Joe Dombrowski. I am a Sagittarius. Uh, <laughs> I enjoy uh, shiatsu massage chairs and reruns of Roseanne. Uh, and when I'm not doing those things, I'm an independent wrestling producer, commentator, jack of all trades, responsible uh, for such hits as the Montreal Theory and the Legend of Virgil, the voice of the international wrestling cartel for 13 years now, and one of, I believe, only three men in 2015 to receive a paycheck from TNA Wrestling, Ring of Honor, and Global Force Wrestling in the span of one calendar year. Actually, only about three or four months, so mm -hmm. I'm somewhat amazing. And now you're here. And now I'm here. See? Absolutely. Hell of a year. And uh, I, I am... Win. The heir apparent, Chris LaRusso, 10-plus-year veteran of the independent scene. You may have seen me in such places as uh, Ring of Honor, Remix Pro Wrestling, uh, newly signed to the International Wrestling Cartel, and uh, I'll be bringing the perspective of someone who's actually been uh, between the ropes. And uh, what my perspective can bring to this, God only knows. So let's that get to the... Uh, that intro was very Troy McClure of you. Troy McClure. Hi, I'm Troy McClure. You may know me from such things as... Yeah, but there. You ready for this? I'm ready for this. Fantastic. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. We are going to start big. We're going to start with the top two. Best male wrestler and best female wrestler. Best male wrestler. Uh, Plummer, let's start with you. All right, good. Thank God. So you guys can't steal my answer now. I only <laughs> have one. Um, you you got to look to the WWE, I think, because that's still they're still the top dogs. And... Uh, wrestler of the Year, in my opinion, has to go to Seth Rollins because here's a guy that really just, if you look at where he started the year, which, which was pretty hot, but, and what he accomplished before his injury, I mean, the guy just took off. Uh, he, he was all over the place. He actually got into mainstream media a little bit too, kind of outside of wrestling. So he almost became like the, the new celebrity, the new spokesperson for the WWE for a while. It's unfortunate that he couldn't finish out the year, but I think even with him missing the year, you got to look to WWE's main guy, their champion, the guy that was the face of the company for so long, Seth Rollins. Fantastic. Mr. Dombrowski. I, mean, I think there's a lot of guys you can make a case for. Uh, certainly Seth Rollins, up until he was hurt, was uh, the flag bearer of the company. You can make a case for, for Roman Reigns with how he's been able to handle the uh, uh, the boost and elevation that, uh, that he's been on. You can make a case for John Cena, who's arguably had... His, uh, his best year in a long time, now that he's not the de facto uh, uh, guy on top. Uh, he's been able to, to be a little fresher as a United States champion and, and work and elevate with some younger talent. Um, to me, there were, there were sort of holes in the calendar year for all of those guys, though. So I'm going to go a little bit uh, against the grain of Mr. Plummer, and I'll look at uh, TNA and Ring of Honor. And, and to me... The, the two biggest stars in those respective promotions that were very consistent throughout the entire year were Ethan Carter III and Jay Lethal. And they are two of the very, very few guys in the business today who are classic tried and true villains and really relish in being hated. And, and if there was one minor critique to Seth Rollins, it's a lot of times he was just so good it was hard to hate him. But EC3 and Jay Lethal uh, uh, have really done their best to be antagonistic, and, and if it's a race to the finish, I'll give a slight nudge uh, ahead and a victory to Jay Lethal. Fantastic. Uh, Mr. LaRusso. Uh, Mr. Dombrowski made some really excellent points. I thought that Jay Lethal had an absolutely fantastic year. Uh, EC3, who uh, actually came around the Pittsburgh area this year, and I got to see up close just how good he is and, 
and really what he brings to the table. Uh, you know, to uh, along what you said, Jay Lethal also had a fantastic 60-minute uh, Broadway match with Roderick Strong in Baltimore, which uh, I got to see live and really, really impressed me. But I'm sadly going to go with uh, a slightly more traditional answer and go with John Cena. Uh, my reasons for that is Cena had some of the best matches of his career this year. I mean, the series with Owens was absolutely fantastic. The match between Cena and Owens at Elimination Chamber uh, really was instrumental in elevating Owens. Uh, the triple threat match with Brock Lesnar and uh, Seth Rollins at, uh, I believe it was the Royal Rumble, was, was so, so, so good. And I think we got to see the value of John Cena in the time he was away. And that when John Cena was away for the past couple months, we have seen a noticeable decline in uh, WWE's ratings, in uh, WWE's ability to right the ship and to go without their uh, flag bearer. And I thought it was very, very telling that in how much the WWE suffered in his absence. And I thought that really shows exactly, exactly how valuable he was to the WWE and continues to be. And, uh, you know, Rollins may be the, uh, the flag bearer of the future. Roman Reigns might be the flag bearer of the future. But for right now, uh, it's, it's still John Cena, and it will be for, for some time to come, I think. Fantastic, folks. We are just getting started with the Mayhemies 2016. Stay tuned to this very channel. we got a lot more videos coming up. Head over to WrestlingMayhemShow.com for voting, and uh, uh, stick around.